So welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, I think that everybody is, uh, in, to some degree, is feeling the angst or tumult from all the, the issues that are swirling around us, whether it's in our own lives, uh, whether it's politically, um, economically, whatever is going on, I know that we're all feeling it in some way. And, and uh, almost everybody you talk to, you know, wa wants to talk about it in some way. Um, so I, I really would like to kind of paint the landscape here um, so we can begin to understand and unravel some of the dynamics that are really at the, at the core of all these issues and experiences that we are having. So I'm really going to kind of start at the top, and I know that a lot of this for everybody will be kind of review, but I think it needs to all be pulled together, um, you know, in, in one, one kind of grouping here so that we can understand the whole, the whole picture and, and how these pieces are working together. Um, for me, clearly, the lunar nodes in Cancer and Capricorn are the underpinning of the time that we're passing through. And uh, they're especially augmented because we have two heavy outer planets, which are in Capricorn. Um, we have two eclipses coming up with both of those heavy planets on, on the south node. So um, the, the Capricorn energy is not doubled. It's, it's like trickle, tripled or quadrupled here. Um, it, it's quite intense. Uh, we, we're going to be working through this uh, through May 20th, and I'm, I'm going to come back to the archetypal expressions of some of these as, as we move through the talk, but this, I just want to lay out, you know, put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, the, other, the other two pieces that I think are quite significant is Jupiter in Sagittarius and Neptune in Pisces. Um, Jupiter was, is going to be in Sag, you know, through the end of this year. Neptune will be in Pisces actually through 2025, which is a significant event, which again, I'm going to touch on a little later in the talk. Um, but there, there's, a, there's a lot going on here. There, there's there's a, you know, a significant uh, correlation between um, Jupiter and Neptune because um, you know, up until the, uh, the late 19th century, 19th century um, Jupiter was considered to also be the ruler of Pisces until Neptune was discovered. Uh, they, they both represent a number of things. This overlaps in the meanings and in the dynamics here. You know, we, we see truth in the search for truth in Sagittarius. We see the, the search for ultimate meaning, if you would, in Pisces. Um, Pisces is, is the truth. It's all the truth because it, it's inclusive. It, it includes everything. Nothing's left out. Um, Jupiter's a little bit more selective, a little bit more subjective and personal. Um, but both of these are about intuition, and both of these are... Are, are really about a, a degree of reasoning that is, um, you know, not, you know, not, not the norm. It's, it's what comes to us at a left field to a degree. And that, you know, I'm going to say that's a Uranus or a Uranian um, expression, but I'm going to apply it here as well because it's the things that come to us in dreams and in visions um, and, um, you know, that all of a sudden we, we just kind of know something. I, th I think that that's Jupiter and Neptune. Um, in these in these natives in their own native signs um, what's what has really intensified this as well is that Jupiter is in the last quarter square to Neptune um, it's squared uh, five times and it, this, this again will persist through the pretty much the end of this year uh, you know, it, it's this is you know the, the the crisis between what's true and what's false you know what's real and what's illusion um, and it's really what we're seeing, you know, right in front of us, the, the drama that's playing out across the zeitgeist and in the media. Um, th this is the big question that all of us are faced with. What do we believe? And this clash of beliefs as well is what's happening. And the other significant thing is that all of the outer planets, with the exception of Uranus, are retrograde. So clearly this is adding a deepening, uh, reflective, retrospective, more intensifying uh, dynamic to all of these outer planet, planet um, dynamics. Excuse me. I'm going to bring in Pallas. Um, I've been talking about, about Pallas lately, and um, this is the reason why uh, she, she's going to make seven conjunctions to the, the outer planets, the Sat Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, uh, between now and the end of 2020, and she's going to actually join up with Neptune as well in 2021. Uh, these are conjunctions. These aren't squares or sextiles. I mean, she's coming, you know, face to face with the entire stellium um, that's that's coming in, you know, into orb of, over the next uh, over the next year. 
So we've got, you know, the three great conjunctions that I've referenced. We have Saturn that will conjoin Pluto in Capricorn um, in January of next year, which, you know, seemed like a long time away a few months ago, but it's coming up faster than we know. Um, it's been in orb really since uh, February of this year and will remain in orb, you know, all the way through the end of next year. So this is, it's not just a singular event that's, you know, one day this is, it's been building in intensity um, I, I did a, a what did you do? An EA Zoom talk here about two months ago, and this is the link to it. Um, you, you certainly can find it in the same place you're going to find this one if you search on my name. Um, and I go through all of these dynamics with with great detail. Um, and then we're going to have Jupiter conjunct Pluto, and this is going to occur in December of next year. It's going to uh, uh, follow up, uh, th excuse me, through December of next year. Uh, Jupiter and Pluto will conjoin three times in April, August, and November, with the August uh, conjunction being the, the part of the retrograde cycle. Uh, uh, we have a little quote here from Charles Harvey. He says, these two planets used to be known as the great chronograters, or rulers of the ages. The cycle can be considered the ground base of human development from which the interaction between perception and ideas, uh, potentialities, possibilities, and their manifestation in the concrete world, uh, Capricorn, um, in the concrete material world. Um, so we can see the import. You know, Ray Merriman called the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, you know, we, this is documented to you know, just follow all the, the major economic cycles. So we, we can see that these two conjunctions alone um, are clearly going to bring about a beginning of a whole new cycle. It's not just one cycle, but it's, it's these three cycles really kind of launching at the same time. It's, it's uh, quite enormous. It's, it, it's an, epic, an, epic, uh, an epic time space that we're going to move through. Um, and then, you know, more imminent, we have the two eclipses coming up in the uh, July, in July, um, I don't have a little bit more to say about uh, the June of uh, July second one is again as we get to it. So, why am I bringing in the nodes? You know, we know from EA the the importance of the lunar nodes. Uh, these these eclipses occur whenever uh, the new moon, which is a solar eclipse, or the full moon, which is a lunar eclipse, occur within 18 degrees of the nodes. Um, when the when the when the uh, luminary is on the nodes, that that is an eclipse. And these nodes we know are, are clearly the, you know, they're the karmic axis um, from past to future that, that, that are integrated and anchored in each present moment by the moon. Um, we see the south node is what we've brought in with us to a great degree. It's our habitual pattern, the, the, the cosmic end product of the, the soul's lunar experiences from the past. Um, because from lifetime to lifetime, we pick up where we left off. Uh, it, it's our emotional memory that, that's re-imaged through the relived experiences, the relived emotional experiences of early childhood, our relationship with our mom, our dad, our, our siblings, uh, what, we, what we pick up, you know, in those first seven years before our, our, our first Saturn square. And it's the moon's natural tendency to remain, remain anchored in these past emotional patterns. Uh, it's the lunar south node. It's our lowest center of gravity, our, our karmic point by default. It's where we go by default. Uh, you know, Western astrology, you know, sometimes likes to urge us to move out of our south node into our north node. We, we can never leave our south node. It's who we are. It's who we've been for, you know, many, many lifetimes. Um, and, and we bring it with us. It, uh, the, 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 the work here is, is to find the synthesis point through the current moon, the current natal moon, and synthesize it with, with the lunar north node. Because the lunar north node is our soul's intention going forward. It's our probable future. Um, it's something that's been seeded by our soul. It, it's, it, but we have to water it. We have to cultivate it. We have to, we have to go out and meet it. Um, and it will facilitate and actualize our evolutionary growth when when we choose it so it, it's it's working in the moment you know the moon is our most conscious part it's our emotional body it's it's where we know in any in any moment are we safe are we not safe you know is is, is this is this a safe place for me or you know is there something wrong here that i that needs to be um adjusted 
Um, and, and this is how we, we move forward by those emotional impulses that we get and to, and to learn to validate those emotions. That's, that's what our moon's about, to, to find that emotional self-reliance that we can trust what we're feeling. So this, this is the uh, July 2nd Cancer Eclipse that's you know, coming up quite shortly. Um, cancer and Capricorn, um, this is mother. It's not just our mother, it's, it's the great mother. It's, it's all mothers. It's everything having to do with motherhood. Um, so it becomes our family, our country, our clan, our tribe. Um, it's our security. It's, it's our safety. It's our sanctuary. The, you know, the, 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 the moon, the fourth house, it's, that, that's our cave. That's, that's where we go when we need to feel safe. We, we, we withdraw into that lunar space um, to find, you know, find our safety. Um, we we may know um, that that you know some of the circumstances that we're holding on to, even relationships we're holding on to, aren't working anymore. But but they're known, they're familiar. It's it's a, you know it's a habitual uh, behavior that's that's easy for us, so we we stay in it. Um, you know the Capricorn the Capricorns uh, 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 Capricorn conjunctions obviously can you know bring in you know pressure, depression, loneliness. Um, I guess I'm looking. I was looking at the lunar eclipse here when I wrote that, um, but it, but the the issues are the same. We we have. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that is Saturn. Excuse me. Um, it, with Saturn opposing the lunation, we definitely have pressure and depression and loneliness. You know, these things are uh, it's it, inherent in 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 feeling secure because at times we don't feel secure. We don't feel safe. We feel, you know, the things are not going the way that we had anticipated. Things are not unfolding as we've expected. Um, it's easy to become depressed that what's familiar is not showing up. Uh, I think a lot of us are also um, are, can see that we're having issues dealing with aging, or if it's not our own aging, uh, perhaps we're caring with somebody who's elderly in our family. Um, almost everybody I talk to is, is somehow it's either themselves or someone else in their family who you know is facing you know aging and maturing issues. And, and then it brings up health issues and really issues of self-care because this is the Capricorn component to it. This is the Saturn component of taking responsibility and being our own responsibility, being our own authority in terms of our health, listening to our body um, and, and hearing, you know, what it is that we need to do and not, not ignoring the things and, uh, and hoping that, you know, that pain will go away. Um, we've got Moon Square Chiron, you know, at this eclipse as well. And so, you know, w w wounding is clearly, you know, on, on the agenda. Uh, being wounded, feeling wounded. Uh, Chiron in Aries, um, to me, speaks to, you know, self-wounding. Um, so to a great degree, we could be experiencing wounding that we've brought on by, you know, to ourselves. Um, or wounding that we've done to someone else who's close to us who, might, who, who really is like ourselves. And that, that is hurting ourselves, you know, close relationships or a family member um, where, you know, we're, we're lashing out at them, but it's really ourselves who, who's, who's going to end up being taking the, the hurt. Um, the moon is squaring Pallas, and I'm going to speak more to Pallas. She, she informs us. She, she is that, that higher octave um, transformer uh, between Uranus and Mercury, and we, she, she gives us messages. Um, so this becomes messages heard but not heeded. And again, and again, I think that this this talks to the the self care and the health care and uh, have have to do with you know taking responsibility. Um, there's the need to be heard too, and uh, or can be too outspoken with Mercury conjunct Mars and Leo. Um, and there's also a need to find our primary authenticity um, and feeling at home in ourselves. You know, just feeling at home in our own body with Vesta conjunct Uranus. So the two other things that are that are coming up as well that nobody really is talking about too much about we talk about the Pluto return but we're also going to have a U.S. Neptune opposition, which is going to occur before the Pluto return. Um, Neptune has a 156 year orbit, and um, we are coming up to the same place in our orbit um, where in, in that in that cycle where Neptune was in 1858. Um, you know, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. Um, in 1858, there was a famous Supreme Court case of uh, Dred Scott, and the Dred Scott ruling was that Negroes were, were, not, were not citizens and therefore were not entitled to equal protection under the law. 
Um, this is what happened at the last time uh, Neptune was at the same degree it actually is today. Um, and uh, no, actually, it, uh, where it was, excuse me, at the opposition. And um, again, we have this opposition will occur three times through 2021 and through 2022. Um, and when it finishes, we have the U.S. Pluto return coming up, which we can't really, uh, we don't really know too much about it because nobody is alive who was here when, the, you know, when it happened the first time. We, we only have, you know, the, the indications it was the time of the American Revolution for sure. Um, but, you know, how it will play out in, in this return is, is hard to say. Um, and the reason that these are important, look at these transit dates. You know, I use five degree orbs for outer planet transits. So the, this Neptune opposition began in April and will last for the next six years. And the U.S. Pluto return began in March and will also last for the next six years. So we, we are looking at a deep current um, within our country itself of some huge huge shift in our belief system in, um, and, and Pluto, you know, Pluto transits, uh, Pluto transits are really what pushes us forward. Um, Pluto transits, you know, can, can devastate us. Uh, transformation is a funny word to use. Um, it, it, you almost have to kind of laugh a little bit. Okay, I'm going to be transformed. Well, when these things happen, we wish it was just a transformation because generally they're much more intense. And, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't hold astrology to be um, especially well served as a predictive science, um, but clearly we're, we're facing some uh, upsets and disruptions as, as the, the next five and six years unfold. Um, so um, th th this is again, you know, something, something that we're looking at. Um, he, this is what the July 2nd eclipse looks like on the U.S. chart. Um, I've, I've been playing around with a number of distant U.S. charts. I don't know that I'm 100% happy with the Gemini rising. I've been working with this. This is the Sag, Sagittarius rising. Um, both of them really do express the, the, uh, human, the uh, American personality. Um, but neither one of them historically is logically correct. Um, so it's interesting. I've, I've come across, um, you know, some new information. I'm studying a, a chart, which is actually a Virgo chart um, that was e erected for um, the decoration of the War of uh, American Independence on January the 6th, 1775. In other words, when the, the Declaration of Independence was released on January, uh, on July 4th, 1776, uh, America had been a, 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 a an, um, sovereign entity for a year. Um, so anyway, but you know, all these charts kind of work in a way because um, we're, we're looking at basically planets that, that are almost in the same place except for um, uh, uh, whatever, they, they do work. So, you know, I, I don't want to defend any, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion and a lot of investigation that still needs to be, needs to be made. Um, but with, regardless of what chart we're looking at, we're, we're looking at very similar planetary placements. So, you know, what, what is this about? What are the issues that are going to kind of come up here? Um, you know, what's real, what is not? I touched on that, you know, with, with Jupiter square Neptune. And what's true, what's not true, what's personal truth, what's ultimate truth, you know, a, a total clash of core beliefs. Um, we're looking at issues regarding freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech. Uh, clearly, they're all under attack. Um, there's a resurgence of racism. Uh, the Saturn-Pluto itself um, conjunction is, is all about a consolidation of power. There have only been four conjunctions of Saturn and Pluto four times in the last 500 years. It's a very rare um, sign for these two planets to conjoin in. And each time that it has happened, um, the, the pa power in some major area in the world has, has shifted from one, one entity to another. And again, this is all detailed in, this, in the Saturn-Pluto talk that I, that I did two months ago. Um, the attacks on women, attacks on minor minorities, um, attacks on people for religious intolerance, um, families at the border, you know, the, these, these are things which are... Uh, just seem to be so out of out of out of uh, you know range of you know what are the the principles and uh, you know ideas that this country was founded on I and mean, where did this come from? 
Um, it's, you know, it's, it is the, the fodder for another talk, because if we understand our, you know, this country's past, it was, you know, it was the Spanish conquistadors, it was the Puritans who burned witches at the stake. Um, this, our country was also under British rule for 171 years before the revolution occurred. So there are all kinds of factors here that, you know, have really been hidden and nobody wants to talk about um, the, 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 uh, the impact of, of the fact that the original settlers from England were, were either royalists or parliamentarians, you know, from back from the English Civil War. Um, they brought slavery with them. They brought all these same injustices and, and prejudices with them. Um, they had lost their homeland when they came here, and so they had no problem taking anybody else's um, in the respect of the, the Native Americans. So you know, we're, we're looking at things that have been embroiled in American culture since the beginning, and then it's overlaid with you know, patriarchal systems that, that we're facing that literally go back millennium. Um, these are all the things that are, that are emerging as Saturn and Pluto uh, transit, uh, the south, south node of Saturn and, and the south node of the moon um, as, as we move through these, these, uh, these eclipses. Um, so why do I bring in um, Pallas? You know, Pallas um, has had a lot to play, a lot to say, um, you know, through the works of Homer, uh, through the Iliad, she was always there for the, the, both the Greek and the Trojan heroes, you know, to, to guide them and inform them, and, you know, to, along their, their, their fate, their, to, to find the, the path to their destiny. And more importantly, it is with Odysseus, with Ulysses, uh, his, his 10 year journey, his 10 year odyssey uh, to find his way back, um, back home to Ithaca. And she was, she was there, you know, at, at important times, at critical points in his passage and, and really turned, turned his direction around and, and helped him find his path, find his way, find his way home. Um, th this, this is her real virtue. This, this is the, the gift that she bestows upon us. Just a, a little background. I think most of you are probably familiar with Pallas, but just to understand who she is mythologically and astrologically, you know, she was the daughter of Zeus, born parthenogenically from his head. So she represents our crown chakra. She was born, you know, on the battlefield, fully clad in armor. Um, uh, Hephaestus, uh, the, the god of the, the forge, uh, Zeus's son had had cleaved Zeus's head because he had a horrible headache and out leaped, uh, out leapt uh, Pallas, you know, uh, screaming a battle cry. Uh, what, what's really important for us to understand is that she was the, he's the goddess, was the goddess most engaged with mortals. Um, Hera was, was too busy, you know, uh, you know, with, with uh, chastising Zeus and, and, and her family. Uh, Vesta, Vesta was, was too much of, a, of an introvert, if you would. Um, we, we, don't, we don't see this kind of interaction from most of the other goddesses uh, or any of the other goddesses. It was, it was Pallas who was there uh, as the agent for mankind. Um, she was the goddess of wisdom. She's a strategist, warrior, activist, patroness, and protect, pro protectress, um, I think is really an important way to view her. Uh, significantly, she's all about pattern recognition. I think that um, if, if you were to look in the charts of many astrologers, you would find that Pallas was, was dominant or in the chart because as astrologers, we need to recognize patterns when we look at a chart. Um, that's, that's Pallas's role. Um, she's able to see the big picture. And when you understand the big picture, the larger, the, the larger vision, then you can understand how each of the smaller pieces uh, fits into that big picture. Um, she was a woman in a man's world. She opens the space for women to find an equal place in patri a patriarchal society. And as I said, she informs us. She is a messenger. Um, she's the octave transformer between Mercury, the lower mind, and Uranus, the higher mind. So wh what's her importance here? Why, what's the significance? Um, just to go back a little bit, she was conjunct the lunar, north, lunar, north, lunar south node and Neptune in Pisces at the time of the Women's March in 2017. Uh, she was conjunct the Lunar North Node during last July's uh, eclipse season. 
Um, she squares, has been squaring the lunar nodes all year and will um, through the end of August. And at the Leo total uh, lunar eclipse uh, uh, in January, um, she was, uh, she joined the Cardinal Grand Cross. Um, and she's, uh, as I said, she squares the lunar nodes and um, opposes Uranus and Eris. Uh, most significantly, she will conjoin Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto at their stellium in December of 2020. This is the map for that event. Um, if you look here, you can see the transits I just described. Um, these are her nodal transits. Um, and these arrows point to the great conjunctions that we refer to. So this is Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, Jupiter, Pluto three times, and then Jupiter, Saturn. And Pallas, because she will retrograde through this period, will is weaving herself in and out of these conjunctions and on december 21st next year when we have this great stellium of these three planets coming together she's right there um, you know the, these energies don't just exist in the sky and they don't just show up in us as you know as dreams and as visions they actually show up as people um, I, I truly believe that there are, you know, that these these so, uh, these archetypes um, have surrogates here in, here on the ground. Um, we are surrogates to some degree, you know, with our astrology. But look look at these lineups here with with the U.S. chart and all of these um, young uh, progressive uh, female women. Not all young. Ruth Bader Ginsburg certainly isn't young. Ginsburg certainly isn't young. But but here, look at this. Uh, Amy Goodman, a journalist, her Jupiter conjunct, con, to, uh, conjunct U.S. Neptune, her um, Chiron conjunct the U.S. Moon, and her Pluto right on the north node of the United States. Uh, Ruder, 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 uh, Ruder, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I'm sorry, let me take a drink, I'm having trouble talking. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, also right here with Pluto on, on Mercury. Mercury opposite Pluto, which, which is our freedoms, our freedom of press and assembly and, and, and the right, you know, freedom of speech. She, she's right there, you know, protecting it. Uh, Sharice Davids was the first Native American woman ever elected to Congress. Uh, here's her Mercury right on the U.S. Uh, Uranus. Uh, AOC, she's the one who's got all, holding all the headlines. She not only has her moon conjunct Vesta, but it's on the U.S. Chiron. Do you think that she's addressing the, the deep, the deep racial wounds and the deep, uh, you know, equal, lack of equal equality in our country? She's speaking directly to it. Um, and, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg also, her Uranus right on uh, U.S. Chiron, and with, uh, you know, being able to judicially disrupt some of the patterns that, that you know, that, that need to be disrupted. Uh, Deb Haaland is right here in New Mexico, one of our representatives, also one of the first Native American women. Her Chiron in Ceres, um, right on, on uh, the U.S. Uh, moon and, and, uh, and palace. Amy Goodman, I said, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, her palace, again, right on the U.S. palace. Um, AOC, Neptune on the U.S. Pluto. Deb Haaland also vest, has Vesta conjunct palace on U.S. Pluto and, and Charisse as well. Um, the, the, I call them, the, these are the goddesses of the blue wave. Um, these are the surrogates here on Earth. I, what, what we have to remember is that to a great degree, we are in essence um, just like Ulysses, uh, just like Odysseus. We, we are at sea. We, we are being bounced from island to island, if you would, of, of, of crisis or you know, places where maybe we could seek refuge and the, and the refuge doesn't exist or being attacked by, by creatures and monsters and demons, uh, being attacked by, by what seems to be weather and, and, and geophysical events. Um, we, we, we're experiencing many of the same things. This, this is our hero's journey to a great degree as a country and, and as individuals as we pass through this space. And what, I, what I'm offering to you is that the remedy uh, what's out there? The hope is is the ability to hear uh, to hear you know our inner voice to to hear our intuition. We we have the support from Jupiter and Neptune in their native signs. 
Um, we we have the you know these these powerful this powerful uh, cancer Capricorn Capricorn energy that really want you know everybody's afraid of Saturn. Saturn is our friend. You know Saturn and Saturn and Capricorn, which is you know where he is. I, I didn't even mention that he's also native. Um, things get done. I mean, Saturn really wants to build something. He wants to establish something. It's, it, he, he's not about, you know, necessarily tearing us down to, you know, to, he's not about depression and pressure just for depression and pressure. Um, he's, he's about uh, really about initiating, uh, you know, create and creating, um, you know, Saturn is in, in essence is you know is, is involution. It's 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 the vessel that that holds that holds spirit. So um, we we have to look at the big picture. We have to have the vision to understand that there's something much greater than we perhaps are seeing that's unfolding, and to understand that these things that are disruptions and interruptions, all this Uranian energy that we're experiencing, and all this. Plutonian and, and, and sad Saturnian energy that we're experiencing is really just a, a reworking. And um, we have to re-image, we have to reimagine, you know, where it can go, where it is, is going to go, because it's, it, it is us who are, who are dreaming it. Uh, this is all a collective dream that we're having. And um, we have been collectively dreaming things, unfortunately, that have brought us the issues that we now face but we can we can change that dream and we are we are getting information from our intuition and from uh, you know our, our, our higher selves that are able to show us that that there is a way forward um, that we can walk so i thank you all for coming um, i hope you enjoyed this talk and uh, be well fantastic thank you daniel we do have um Quite a few people join in the audience now. So, will you do a Q and A? Sure. Okay. Any questions or comments? Hi, Daniel. Uh, this is Wendy. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you, um, Wendy. I missed part of it because I was just driving home from work. Um, did you talk about the eclipse? Um, the second eclipse? No. No, I only did the first. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was good. I, I, I was just at work. Um, I work for an acupuncturist part-time, and she was like, what's going on? <laughs> was like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Things are feeling kind of funny. Like, you know, where's the hope? So I see polar bears starving. And <laughs> I was like, well, it's a big question, right? It's, There's a big, a big answer. Symptoms are the attempt of the body to heal. Mm, exactly. Of course, that's it. Exactly what's happening on a huge scale. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I said, well, we're hitting bottom, and bottom isn't always very pretty. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Anyway, I didn't really have a question. Just was what well, I was wondering about the other eclipse. Thank you so much. No, yeah, thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Okay, well, that brings us to the end of your meeting, Daniel. Thank you so much from all of us. And uh, looking forward very much to seeing you next time. Thank you. Namaste.